This is the PS3 supercomputer created by the US Air Force's Research Lab in 2010. You're probably wondering why this existed and why you'd use PlayStation 3s to build a supercomputer. In this video we're going to cover both those questions. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps this small channel grow. So let's have a look at one PS3 supercomputer itself and then we'll have a look at what it was used for and why they chose to use PS3s to build it. This PS3 supercomputer was the largest built and was known as the Condor Cluster. It was made of 1,760 PlayStation 3 consoles, all linked together and working together. This photo shows just part of that supercomputer. The computer used an incredible 5 miles of cable to connect the PS3s together and was located in New York. So what was it used for? The Condor Cluster was used for mainly satellite imagery processing, its processing power allowed it to analyse high resolution images from satellites at over a billion pixels per minute, greatly reducing the amount of time needed to analyse satellite data for things such as monitoring the weather and creating climate change models. It was also used for AI research that needed far more processing power than the average PC can provide. So why did they use PS3s to build this supercomputer rather than just use regular PC parts or servers? One of the main reasons is that the PS3 featured a groundbreaking Cell CPU. This was a regular dual-core CPU alongside an incredible eight coprocessors. This was an extremely unusual design and made it incredibly hard to develop games for the console as they need to write code for a specific core and rewrite it for another in some cases. This did, however, mean it gave the console an incredible amount of processing power. This is one of the reasons the PS3 was used for supercomputers. In fact, a PS3 cell processor running fully optimised code could probably stand up to some desktop CPUs today. It really was ahead of its time. The original PS3, also known as the Fat PS3, was also capable of running Linux, which makes it easy to connect the consoles to each other and run bespoke applications, which are crucial when using a supercomputer. The final reason the PS3 was used to build a supercomputer was cost. The PS3s needed for the project cost around $400 at the time of building, giving them an approximate total of $704,000 for the total amount of PS3s. To get the same performance from servers or regular PC parts would have cost in the tens of millions. The power consumption of the Condor cluster was around 10% of that of supercomputers with similar processing power at the time. As technology moved forward, the PS3 supercomputers began to become less useful compared to modern ones. With the launch of the PS3 Slim and Super Slim, Sony removed the ability to run Linux on them, effectively making the newer machine useless to those looking to build a supercomputer from them. Do you think we'll see a PlayStation supercomputer again in the future? Please do subscribe if you found this video useful, and thanks for watching.